Hi class, I hope you're doing well. This Explain Everything is going to break down the chapter um, in your Basic Drama Projects book, Chapter 19, Lighting. We're going to talk about functions of lighting and particularly instrumentation of lighting so that when you come to class um, next time you'll have a better understanding of the instruments you're going to use and you'll be able to interact in the lesson um, in a much more hands-on way that will be safe for both you and the instruments. So please look this over and uh, you can tweet me if you have any questions. If you plan to tweet me, I've just listed my Twitter handle um, and that's where you should address your questions too. Okay, well what are some of the functions of light? on stage. Obviously the most important thing is that the audience can see the action. Um, while it's important that everything be seen, uh, you have to keep in mind that there has to be a balance. If there's too much light, you'll have glare and nobody likes that when you're sitting up watching TV and the sun shining through and you can't see the picture because there's too much light shining on the screen. That's what glare is. Um, but if it's too dark, then the action becomes obscured or shadowy, and um, sometimes you want that effect, uh, but other times it's too much and you can't see what's going on. So it's very important to find balance. We like balance. Okay, the next important thing that we need to talk about is emphasis, and we talked about this today in class. Um, sometimes you'll be looking at a lot of things on stage, and it's more important for one thing to be in focus. So emphasis is all about highlighting the scene in a way that the audience is looking at what you want them to focus on. Okay, so um, I just added in this picture, which is from The Lion King, and you can see that in this case, um, we have uh, this character who is um, Rafiki um, is in focus while all the background action is in shadow. So that's one way that lighting designers can draw focus without making the rest of the picture dark. Um, you'll see in this uh, clip that there are... Um, a lot of, oh shoot, you'll see that there are, um, let's see, uh, a couple of things used in this picture to um, help maintain focus and give us this shadow effect. Uh, first of all, this back curtain that's lit red, that is called, uh, that is called the cyclorama. Um, which we'll often refer to in class as the psych. One of the other tools that's used, um, you can see that the light shining on Rafiki is um, a white color while everything else is dark and black. We call that a special. It's a specialized light that's focused on only one um, actor. Uh, if this had been done with a spotlight, uh, the spotlight would be shining um, at Rafiki and it would cast shadow um, onto the action around um, even though we can focus the ball of light so it's just shining on the face it would still light up some of this tree behind so um, instead they've used a special that if you can sort of imagine up here are sort of lighting instruments hanging down um, one of these lights is focused downward right on Rafiki. And we'll get into that um, focus in a second. And the last point I want to make about function of light is that it should be practical. It should make sense. So if you're lighting a play and uh, it takes place in a house and there are lots of lamps, well, you will use a lamp to light that, but you have to add support light. Um, to help light the rest of the scene so that um, things can be visible uh, on the whole stage that would make sense um, 
that wouldn't be able to be seen with just the lamp, but uh, you can add support to sort of bolster that lamp, but still um, create the illusion that um, it's only the lamp that's causing the light. And we'll get into that a little bit more as we go on. And looked at Rafiki um, right here and see how that uh, beam of light is that special that we mentioned is focused right on Rafiki. That would be a Lico. Okay, so now I want to take a moment and talk about all the equipment that we're going to be using. Um, all of the instruments in Room 120 uh, that you'll be working with are very expensive, and so it's very important that you understand the basics of how they work. I'm just going to introduce you to them um, very briefly here because we're going to talk in class next time more extensively about how light is made and how they function with the electricity in room 120. But for right now, let's just get introduced to them. This first uh, lighting instrument is known as, uh, it's known as an ellipsoidal reflector spotlight, um, or ERS. We'll refer to this, um, its nickname is Alico. Um, the reason it's called that is because the device inside the the uh, lighting instrument that reflects what the little light bulb is putting out is um, ellipsoidal in shape. So it's like an egg. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that uh, when we open up a light instrument next time. Um, Lico's are particularly good for three things. First of all, it throws um, a very strong beam of light uh, from a long distance. So if we went back, um, um, the second reason that uh, is it, the second uh, important thing about a Lico is that they can hold gobos. Uh, gobos are specialized metal discs that have a pattern. You can see this pattern is sort of like uh, very um, scattered. But what's great about them is that the strong focused light from the gobo will diffuse through the pattern and you can create different shapes or effects. I'm going to show you an, uh, an example right now. You can see that this gobo um, has been focused so that it's pointing at the floor and you'll see the um, wood, uh, the hardwood floor. And then obviously this gobo was uh, cut out of trees uh, which gives that effect. All right, so the next piece of equipment we're going to talk about is um, officially called a Fresnel, um, but again, it has a handy-dandy nickname, which is a PAR uh, can, but we're just going to call it a PAR. Um, so the PARs in 120 um, are good for a couple of things. So in a big theater, uh, PARs or Fresnels uh, per are used primarily for throwing um, sort of general light over a, sh uh, a very large wash of the stage, um, and they hang from a shorter distance. Uh, in the case of the Lico's, if we went back to our previous slide, uh, you could put those very far out in what we call the house, where the audience sits, and they would throw light straight at the actors um, so that the light is shining more on the face and the body. Uh, if you're thinking about, sorry, if you're thinking about, you know, the design of a theater and say this was the roof, here's our proscenium, okay, and our actor standing on stage, he's very tall in this picture, um, you have a grid up here where you can't see where there's lights that sort of shine down, um, and so that would be where your um, Fresnels would hang as opposed to, you know, here's my audience area, oh, my heads, remember that day we all drew what our theater looked like? Okay, and hanging above the audience somewhere back here on a batten is a Lego that's throwing light at the actor that way. So hopefully that makes a clearer uh, distinction for you. Additionally, uh, additionally, where you, uh, you can actually do this with a Lego and a par. Uh, but because we are using our PARs to um, light general areas of the stage and not focus so clearly on um, faces uh, and what we would call front light, um, 
it's particularly good to use gels or colored um, gelatin strips. You can see them right here in this picture. Um, as a way to create different moods of lighting. Uh, so you can see this frame we have here, a gel frame. Uh, and you'll get to practice this in class uh, tomorrow, but you'll get to load the gel, so just this sheet of cellophane basically, um, into the gel frame and then it will hook actually right into here. You can kind of see that there's like these little spaces and a little, this, see how that lip kind of holds it in? So you'll get to learn how you would actually load it um, into the front part of the light so that, you know, if you put red, the light would look red. If you put blue, the light would look blue and so on and so forth. One of the other um, instruments that we will be, um, that lives in 120 but we won't necessarily be using for our projects is a follow spot. And I'm going to pull it up for you in just a moment. Shoot. Okay, so here you'll see the follow spot, um, and it has a special little oops, special little charge box here. Um, those are very heavy, and they um, are stored in a different place from the actual spot. You can see. The spot here lives on a little tripod stand, and this one is very close to the actual one in 120. Um, there is an attachment that's not pictured here um, that can have uh, a color changer. Um, so what you can do, and we will look at this part in class tomorrow, um, but you can flip different gels in front of this light uh, to create different effects. Now, what is the purpose of using a follow spot? Um, well, you probably are most familiar with being aware of this kind of light because your follow spot does a few things. Um, its main job is to throw a bright focused light onto a moving actor. Now, we can do that in a couple of ways. Uh, we can... So, the first thing we can do is to change the aperture. So, the opening of the light sort of look at this as our light, um, there's a little tight focus so that depending on how open it is we can get smaller and smaller and concentric circles um, to where we could be lighting the whole body of an actor or just the actor's face. We can also change the focus of the throw of light, so how soft or hard the beam is, which can create um, a different kind of focus. You could be very, uh, almost have your actor outlined um, against the darkness, or it could sort of be a much softer, gentler light on their um, person. Okay, this next uh, unit that we have, and it's the final lighting instrument that we're going to talk about, um, has three names. Uh, strip lights. Not for the reason you're thinking, it's because they are in a strip. Um, they're also known as border lights. And uh, you'll hear me refer to them as psych lights. C-Y-C. -C. That's a little clearer. The reason we call them psych lights is because, if you remember back to what we were talking about uh, when we first started our lecture, and we had this picture of Rafiki, um, you can see the red uh, lights shining. Those, that's made actually by this instrument, these strip lights. Now, you'll see that there's a red gel and a green gel and a blue gel. Um, what you'll find out tomorrow or even um, the following class that we have is by using different combinations of these lights, you can create different colors on this site. So any of you who've had physics or art know a little color theory, um, you might be able to catch on to this a little quicker than some of the others. But um, clearly what they're showing here is mostly just just the red lights. Maybe some green uh, right in the center. You can kind of see there's almost an orangey tinge there. Um, and when you add a little green, it almost works as yellow um, with light. It's very different than just color theory and art. So anyway, these lights, these strip lights or border lights or psych lights, um, they shine, they're focused to point straight down 
onto the psych, sort of at an angle, and you can definitely see that very clearly in 120. Uh, sometimes you have them on the floor too. They would be behind the actors and behind the psych. The psych is this curtain in the back um, that the light is shining on um, so that they could shine up onto it as well as down onto it. Hopefully that makes a little sense. It will definitely be very clear in 120. Um, what you can't see in this picture is that the, the theater has a curtain with sort of a scalloped edge, or a straight edge. But what that's doing is covering what uh, this unit of light. So in 120, what you'll get is, if this is the psych lorama or the psych, you'll get um, sort of a scalloped edge of light. So that's sort of how the light shines down. Um, and normally in a regular theater, whoop, normally in a regular theater, you'd have your curtain... You know, here's my curtains, and they would be blocking that scalloped edge, so you would only see uh, the lights shining down, um, and it would create this sort of wash against the uh, backdrop or cyclorama, um, and that's spelled C Y C C C sorry C Y C L O R A M A cyclorama. It's a Greek word. Yay, the Greeks. Okay, so let's do a little review here. Uh, we talked about a number of instruments, and there were four in particular that we're going to look at uh, tomorrow in class. And the first one we talked about was known as a lico, and its official name is um, an ellipsoidal reflector spotlight. Okay. So you need to make sure that you know exactly the kind of light uh, that an ERS or a LECO throws onto an actor. Okay, um, And we mentioned that there was a special tool that we could put into that LECO that we can't put into a PAR light um, that can create certain shapes. Okay, You can think back to what that is. Hopefully you got it right. It's a gobo. Um, the second light that we looked at, that we definitely will be looking at tomorrow, um, had a softer focus but could throw light over a large area, um, but it, we would hang it at a shorter distance, and that's a par. Okay, It's also known as a Fresnel, that's its official name, because it was invented by a guy named Fresnel, and I know, I'm sorry, the S is silent, kill me, these people are French. Okay, so that's our par light. And with, with both a PAR and a LECO, if we want to use color, we add a gel. Um, so those are the four things we are definitely going to look at tomorrow in class. Um, if, again, if you have any questions about this lecture or you're not sure on certain concepts, remember we just broad stroked them, but you can go ahead and tweet me um, any questions you have, and I will be happy to try and answer them the best we can. Uh, if you have gloves, okay, um, not like uh, winter gloves, but any sort of gardening or um, even, um, you know, for doing work with tools, like um, uh, if you're working with saw at home or your dad has gloves, okay, um, bring in gloves if you have them, okay, not dish gloves, not winter coat gloves, it needs to be a protective glove protective. Okay. Uh, I only have a limited number in class and um, you will definitely be able to, to get your hands on more things if you happen to be able to bring in a pair of gloves um, that you can use and maybe share with one person. So again, thank you so much and I will see you all in class tomorrow.